Okay, it looks like we are recording, so I'll go ahead and start the video by presenting today's agenda. Uh, the agenda for today is to pick the MOSFETs, uh, to make a draft of the power stage design, and to possibly connect uh, the power stage to STM32. I think we're going to have enough work to do uh, just with these two first items here. Um, to remind anybody who hasn't seen any of the other videos in this series, it, I'm designing a motor drive that um, looks like this. Uh, this is the block diagram of the motor drive and um, I'm going to be uh, working on these two parts today. Um, let's get started. So I'll go uh, to Mauser and I'll look up the data sheet. The first thing I'll do is look up the data sheet for the uh, DRV chip. So it would be this one, DRV8302. Uh, that's the MOSFET driver that I'm going to be using for this design. I've used this MOSFET driver before and uh, I was very happy with it. Uh, so I'll be using it again. Uh, this MOSFET driver has pretty much all the needed functionality for implementing the power stage. Let's see. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, the, I'll go ahead and and just go to the. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, actually, first of all, I'll go through the pins on my uh, symbol. Uh, I have a an older symbol for this chip, but I don't think that it has um, correct pin assignments. Um, and something I want to check primarily is the power pin assignments, uh, the way they are done. Because uh, Keycad now shows the uh, the type of the pin by the on the side of the pin. So uh, let's go over all the pins uh, and see if they're all correct. Uh, clock is the input, um, comp is the output, uh, vSense, power ground, input, input. Um, DTC, dead time adjustment, input, um, PVM input, um, over current is an input, gain is an output. Uh, gain selection for integrated current shunt amplifiers. If gain equals low, then the internal current shunt amplifier, gain of 10 volts, gain high, and yeah. Uh, so is this really an output? Um, this should be an input, I think. This definitely looks like it should be an input. Gain selection, yes. It must be something wrong in the data sheet, I think. Input output power, okay. Um, I'll skip this for now, leave it at input. Um, and uh, GVDD is, what is GVDD? Let's see. Uh, OC adjustment, or current adjustment, and DC calibration, both inputs. Uh, GVDD is power, CP1 is power, power, uh, although there, there are going to be power inputs because um, this is, uh, I don't think this, wait, let's see, internal gate driver voltage regulator, yeah, so they are, um, they're kind of, um, They are kind of uh, unspecified, I would say, because they're not actually used to drive anything. And uh, this is charge pump pin one. Um, so they're gonna have power on them, but uh, the purpose of of uh, assigning the the correct type of the pin is to to do DRC and to catch some simple faults that can occur if, for example, two power pins are connected together. Um, so in this case. Um, I'll leave it on power output for now uh, and uh, check all the other pins and uh, we'll just see if the DRC is going to give us any errors later and adjust the, the pin types to, to pass the DRC, whatever makes kind of, whatever makes sense there. Um, let's see, so input uh, gate is all the inputs uh, until DVDD which is um, internal supply voltage 
should be connected to ground. It's, it's actually a power output, but it's not going to be used to drive anything. Um, it's actually good to keep these on power outputs because uh, this will prevent them from being shorted together. Let's see, ref is an input. Uh, current sensing outputs, uh, AVDD is a power input. Uh, or actually this is an internal 6 volt supply. Uh, should be connected to G and D and uh, A, G and D is power as well. Um, PVDD1 uh, is the power for power supply for gate driver current shunt amplifier independent of buck supply should connect to GMD so it's it's kind of a power output maybe um, although I think I think this is gonna be a power input um, I'll check the schematic later uh, on the uh, on another page in this data sheet there is a reference schematic. Uh, current sensing, all, all of these are inputs. Uh, sh let's see, SH, uh, SHC, um, high side MOSFET uh, and gate drive output for low side MOSFET. GLC is the output. Yeah, SLC is an input. Uh, SHC is an input. Uh, this is gonna be, let's see, this is gonna be an input uh, to the chip. Um, I said VDS is measured between this pin and PVDD1. Okay. So this is used as a measurement for the gate driver. Uh, GHC output, uh, boost power output, uh, boost drop cap pin for half bridge, uh, capacitors for half bridge C, uh, right, so that's for the boost C. And then uh, all of these follow the same um, pattern. Bias is used for um, uh, this bias pin. Uh, there is a more detailed description somewhere else in the data sheet. Uh, pH is the source for uh, the buck converter, uh, which is wait, pH 1551. Yeah, right. So this is an output. This is supposed to be an output. Uh, and then, let's see. And the uh, boost for the buck converter is power PVDD2. Uh, is power input. Uh, we can keep this as power output. Enabling the buck converter is an input, and as STR is an input. Uh, and GND is uh, the power pad is a power uh, input. Yes. Okay. So now the um, the schematic symbol is fixed. Uh, I may perhaps uh, rearrange some pins, although I don't think I'll be rearranging any pins on this schematic symbol because I want it to be exactly the same as the symbol on the reference schematic that's presented in the data sheet for this chip. Uh, and that's very useful uh, to just make sure that uh, my schematic follows roughly the recommended reference schematic. Uh, now I'm gonna find the footprint for this because this one doesn't have a footprint yet uh, so the footprint is going to be um, packaged with a power pad underneath uh, HTS, HTS SOP uh, 14610 um, I can open up the fields and just go to the footprint here and browse for footprint and I think we can use a footprint that is already available uh, HT soft where is HT soft let's see um, HT soft um, and then we have 56 pin package uh, HT soft 56 uh, 6 10 14 yes this looks like exactly the package we're going to be using so we pick this it's happening for mouse uh, so we pick this package as the footprint, and uh, the schematic symbol is done. Uh, this is going to be invisible. Don't want to see any footprint names. 
uh, on the main schematic and um, I can now uh, go ahead and make some room for this um, for this drive circuit let's move this down there and then move this one actually move all of it over here uh, and I'm gonna be designing the circuit right here uh, it's gonna be two circuits I'm gonna design first circuit first and then I'm gonna just copy it um, DRV8302 is gonna be here so if you look at the schematics uh, let's see if there is a schematic symbol for the DRV chip uh, from KiCad 83 there is an 8308 and uh, the problem with this schematic symbol is that it doesn't follow the reference schematic uh, which is in the data sheet. So it makes it a little bit hard to work with this with this schematic symbol. It's much better to follow the exact symbol that they have in the data sheet. Um, and um, let's see. And this is interesting. So uh, apparently uh, the visibility settings didn't apply. So I have to open this up again. I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to open this in the library editor and uh, I'm going to go to uh, the field editor and in the field editor I will set uh, the visibility. Uh, actually value is going to be visible but this one is not going to be shown. So for some reason uh, there is, this is probably a bug. So if, unless I set them from the field editor they don't actually apply so update field values and uh, most probably this is oh yeah this worked uh, although if I if I change the field uh, in the schematic then it won't update sometimes uh, when it comes to visibility settings uh, although it should update so everything should be done in the in the component library and not on the schematic that's something that KiCad got wrong in my opinion uh, okay, so going back to this uh, data sheet, I'm going to go to the reference schematic, which is uh, down here. And um, this is going to be the basis for my circuit. So this pretty much shows everything that's supposed to be connected to this chip. I'm going to check if there is another reference schematic that has all the names. Here it is. All the values for the components. So this is how this uh, how this chip connects to the to the MOSFET bridge, and uh, we actually have even I think although no we don't have the names we don't have a suggestion for the MOSFETs but we have component values uh, the most common component values for all of the components uh, that are required to get this chip to work. Uh, this chip has an internal buck converter that uh, generates five volts. And the um, uh, components here are for this buck converter. Uh, and what I'm going to do first is uh, just make a copy of this schematic uh, and use the components as they're specified. And then I can go through uh, each component and see if I need to make any adjustments for that. Uh, let's see. So we have a few resistors there. Uh, that are pulled up to VCC. Um, I have to see if if I really need to use uh, this buck converter. Maybe I can just remove all of these components and use the five volt regulator, because um, I'm gonna have a, a dedicated five volt regulator. Just to uh, I'm also thinking about isolation of of this drive uh, circuitry from the rest of the control board, so it may be a good idea to have a, a dedicated 5 volt regulator. I haven't decided on that yet. Uh, I'm going to have a think about that. Uh, so let's put some 10k resistors uh, for pulling up the GPIO lines uh, that go out of the chip. Uh, question is if we actually even need them. Because the thing is, the so we have a, even the the sense circuitry here. If we use a dedicated power supply, we can drop all of these components and uh, just use one uh, five volt power supply. Because we have two chips, so dropping all these components would be nice. 
Um, I'm not gonna put them on yet. Um, let me just check the descent spin. What does it do? Uh, was it for the buck regulator? Buck output voltage sense spin. Right. So we don't need that now. Good question. How do we go back in uh, the PDF reader? Is it possible to go back to previous page I was on before I before I click the the search uh, before I search for something and it jump to something else? Uh, anyway, so um, th this circuit is for uh, the comp pin is responsible for. That's actually for the buck converter. Like all of this stuff is for the buck converter. And um, I think we can just drop all of them. The, bu the buck converter is a, is a separate circuitry here uh, that um, just is designed to produce five volts on the output. So we don't need any of that. It's gonna be a simpler design if I just drop it. But I have to just do double check that, that I can actually drop it. Uh, but I think I can. I'm pretty sure I can drop this. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to the to the circuit example here, and I'm gonna lay out all the other connections. Where is it? Come on. Maybe I should like bookmark the page or something. Oh, there it was. Let's see. Where is the circuit? Okay, so what else do we have here? Uh, the enable buck converter. Actually, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna just copy this URL and paste it in a different tab, and then I can have searching in one tab and the uh, schematic in the other. Yeah. Um, I can skip that, I can skip that. Uh, so let's just go back here and just make them no, no connects for now. So that one. Comp descends uh, power ground. Uh, let's see, N buck is also going to be uh, removed, and then I can do this just to find the pin uh, specifications here. Uh, let me just check this is a schematic of the internals of this chip just to see. Are there any other pins that belong to the buck converter? Where is the internal block diagram? Where is it? Let's see. Page down. There. There it goes. Yeah, so PVDD2 and uh, power ground is also for the buck converter. Um, PVDD2 is used for... It seems that PVDD2 is only used for the buck converter. Um, buck boost, SSTR. SSTR is also tuning circuitry for the buck converter um, yeah so uh, these pins are not going to be used for now uh, then we can put um, so pH what is pH What 
plus pH or anything that I have to think about. It's going to be close to PVDB2. No. Where is pH? It's probably an, at the end of this. Yes. Source of the thermal high sub uh, MOSFET of buck converter. Internal high sub MOSFET of the buck converter. It looks like pH is um, not used here. Not going to use that either. And uh, bias is the bias pin. Yeah. So bias is going to have one mega ohm resistor to the ground. Let's see if we have a one mega ohm resistor. Nope. Uh, so we're going to create the one mega ohm resistor and we're going to go to Mauser and find it first. For this schematic, I'm going to be using 402 parts, uh, where it's possible to use 402 parts. Uh, and I'm, I'm only going to be using uh, larger parts if it's, if it's not possible to use the 402 parts. If the power dissipation of the part is higher than the 402 parts can handle. So uh, this would be a 1 mega ohm. Um, 't if we can get anything by searching like this I suppose they they, they write one mega ohm like this one. SMB 1 mega ohm 50 uh, fixed ohm resistor 50 volts. Um, let's see which one we can pick here. Oh, and I'm gonna be only picking the ROHS compliant parts. Uh, I suppose the fly would fly that tick box. Um, yeah, so they have one million of these in stock, five percent. Um, and uh, for the same price, four million in stock, one percent. So I'll definitely go with this one. to the library and just copying uh, another resistor and making I'm gonna copy it like a 402 resistor duplicate symbol and uh, I'll just set this to so edit that one percent and it's gonna be one mega ohm uh, and uh, the manufacturer number is gonna be set to the correct manufacturer number and uh, I'll just remove the one of the fields just so I can update the the other fields using my script. Uh, so uh, I'll edit the graphic text also to say one M. Uh, I've I've gone to use the the graphic text for uh, um, specifying the value of components, and that's because I want to use separate symbols for every separate component. That just makes my life so much easier when it comes to generating the bomb, um, assigning footprints only once, things like that. So it's it's really it's really the proper workflow, I would say, in KiCad. But uh, it's not the workflow that's officially supported by KiCad. They want you to kind of go to Footprint Assignment Wizard and assign footprints uh, for every single schematic that you generate, which is which is which is bad, which is weird. 
it's like it's total waste of time uh, I think you should only do it once and then and then go and um, just generate the just go to the PCB and you get all the components uh, with all the footprints and all the values already set so bias is gonna go there and this will connect to uh, let's put a label on this to save space so this would have a GND label connected to it and GND will, will then connect to, to the actual ground uh, which is actually important to make sure that it does connect to actual ground um, before we continue so it's going to be in the power here and uh, you can put a GND label uh, so one of the benefits of assigning the pin types is that you will get uh, a DRC error if you have power pins that don't have uh, a connection to a power source like for example this ground symbol uh, I'll just connect these two together and then I will go back to this uh, to the top here and um, uh, let's look at the next pin on the reference connect Uh, so we have the boost capacitors uh, that go that connect to the motor drive and um, that are used to to boost the voltage on the high side MOSFET. So on the gate of the high side volt uh, of the high side MOSFET, the voltage is going to be uh, around 12 volts uh, over um, the supply voltage. So anything that goes here in order to switch these MOSFETs. That the voltage has to be higher than PVDD and the capacitor here uh, accomplishes that uh, we can see if they have any recommendation for the voltage rating for those capacitors um, but to be on the safe side I'll probably go for like uh, 60 volts or 63 volts uh, for these capacitors uh, let's see Current shunt amplifiers, uh, buck converter, we're not going to be using this. Um, protection features, uh, current limiting mode. Bulk capacitance. Uh, let's see. That's now that's going to be on the uh, on the main power lines, and then let's see. And then it's just layout. So they don't actually say any specific recommendations for for these capacitors. Uh, so uh, I'll just use common sense, and um, even though. It's possible to use a lower um, voltage rating. 
uh, I will go with proper high voltage rating capacitors. Uh, the reason for lower voltage rating is that the voltage across the capacitor isn't actually going to be uh, that high. Uh, or, um, uh, let's see. Um, or no, no, sorry, that's, I was wrong there. So, um, I will go with with um, 0 0.1 um, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors rated at somewhere around 63 volts, um, so that we can uh, actually it should be around it should be 60 volts. So 63 volts is actually a little bit low, I would say, but it it should work anyway. Um, it's sufficiently, it's a few volts over the, the actual voltage that they're going to see. Uh, let's see. So cap uh, 0.1 or 100 nanofarads. 100 nanofarads. I have 50 volts there and uh, I have to find a capacitor that has um, 60 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I will find uh, some boost capacitors on Mauser, which are rated at over 63 volts. interested in capacitor kits uh, so 100 nanofarads uh, and um, let's search for 63 volts just to get something and then I can refine the search so um, I can go in passive components and uh, let's see capacitors So I'm going to have a SMD uh, termination style and a capacitance of 100 nanofarads. Or 0 0.1 microfarad. And uh, voltage rating above 60 volts, above 63 volts, actually. Okay. So it seems we, we only have two choices there, like 63 volts and 100 volts. Maybe something higher than that as well. Um, 1,444 uh, results and uh, case code could choose that as well. Let's see. So I want to have something that's as small as possible. Uh, this one is voltage rating 250 volts, which is nice. Uh, 250 volts and uh, a little bit more expensive, so if I can find something that has, uh, I don't need anything over 100 volts, so I can go with with the 805, unless I find something even cheaper. It doesn't have to be the cheapest; it has to be a good quality capacitor. Uh, so I, I don't want to have the cheapest one, but it's nice if they have, um, if, if they are generic components. So they, they're going to be cheap if they're a generic component that's used a lot. Um, let's see. This one is 1210, and there is actually one 0402. And they're all 10%, uh, which tolerance of 10%. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, how exact
stacked they are. It just has to be a certain minimum capacitance. Uh, so I'll pick this one. I'll go with uh, 402 for now. So 100 volts, 402, and uh, oh, and it's not in stock. Okay. Uh, let's search for anything that's in stock and compliant. Of course it's not in stock. Everybody picks the 402 part. Everybody wants to save PCB space. Twelve ten and twelve oh six and uh, six oh three. But yeah, mostly mostly six oh three eight oh five. Uh, 805 would be it would be best to to go with 603 let's see is this available 157,000 100 volts but not very exact so not very good quality uh, and this one is 603 100 volts temperature range is pretty much within limits so 18 uh, 0.183 and then if we go with a 1206 it's pretty much yeah it's not that much more um, the one that is most in stock here is 121,000 uh, and that's uh, in 1206 package so it's a pretty large package. Let's go with the 603. Which one was it? I think it was this one. Yeah. This one. So 0603 and uh, 0 0.1 microthreads. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit to my library. I already have a capacitor that's very similar, but for 10 volts. And this would be 100 volts. And uh, I think we also changed here. 100 microns, 100 volts. Good. And then uh, just a small change to the. I just remove the field in order to update all the other parameters. Um, let's see. So I'm running my script and I should have all of the parameters available now. So uh, 100 nanoclouds. 100 volts, 603. And this one is, uh, yes, the right price is updated, everything is updated. Uh, 121,000 in stock. So, um, I'm going to move this to, uh, so let's see how it's going to look. This would be the boost circuit for the MOSFETs. going to go between BST and uh, SH.
high gate uh, and uh, this would be the solids and, uh, PC also has a one megaohm resistor. Uh, what is the DPC pin? Oh, that's dead time control. Dead time adjustment with external resistor to ground. Okay. So I suppose if we set it to um, one mega ohm, then we are not using the the dead time circuitry, which is okay because the STM32 has dead time adjustment uh, built in, so we can adjust the dead time using the STM32 timer. Okay, yes, we can have that, that, probably even have it disconnected, but I think it's good to um, just ground it with a large resistor just so that it's uh, at a known value, so it doesn't fluctuate. Uh, so, um, this would be the high. Um, let's see if we can just... Um, wire this up directly. Uh, so, source SLA, what would, what would that be connected to? Yeah, that would be the low, um, the low side, um, basically just connected to ground in most cases. And connected to the current sensor resistor. So this is how it does current sensing. It will sense current on two phases, uh, and uh, this chip co uh, contains bidirectional current sensing. So you will have um, an output that fluctuates uh, around the zero point, uh, and you only need two. Uh, you need you need to only sense current on two phases, in order to um, deduce the current of the third phase, using this approach. So as long as the um, as long as the motor that's being driven has three phases, uh, you can reconstruct the currents of all three phases. If this would be a, a DC motor or um, uh, some other device that just uses uh, a single stage of this H bridge, then uh, we we still have the current uh, on the current measurement for for driving this device, but we are not going to have. Uh, any current measurement on the third phase if it's connected to something else. Um, let's see. So um, next step, I would I would go ahead and pick the MOSFETs actually, because uh, that's a very important step. Uh, there is um, a very nice uh, MOSFET combination I think that has uh, two or six MOSFETs that's specifically designed for. Uh, for this kind of three-phase drives. Um, let's see if we can find it. Uh, I'll just go to the category of MOSFETs and uh, refine the search. Um, I want to look for two-channel MOSFETs because I want to um, just have as few components as possible. So if I can have uh, just three components instead of six, then that's a win. And uh, and also, uh, when I have multiple MOSFETs in the same package, they usually can have very nice connections that are easy to, to wire to the power supplies without having to mess with the, too many bias around the, around the MOSFET. Uh, so, uh, drain source breakdown voltage has to be above the the rated voltage of this drive uh, so we can go above 60 volts
Let's go with 62 volts. See what we get. Uh, and choose everything that is above that. Uh, continuous drain current. That's the continuous current that um, that our MOSFET is going to be able to conduct, uh, which would be um, let's go with 50 amps. So I'll go with like it can be like 48 amps and above that, just to see what kind of MOSFETs we're going to get. If I can, uh, even though I have a requirement for uh, 20 amps. I can uh, put a little bit more powerful MOSFETs uh, on the board and be able to drive higher power loads um, anyway. And up to 60 volts because that's the operating voltage of the DOV chip. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit higher ratings on the MOSFETs. Uh, drain source resistance, uh, gate source threshold voltage, uh, pretty much usually quite low let's see if there's any yeah two volts for or four and a half volts for most of them it's gonna be ten, 12 volts um, delivered by the driver so um, gate source voltage uh, this would be um, so gate source voltage is actually important um, because we're gonna have 12 volts uh, difference between gate and the source. So it's good to have anything above 20. And gate charge. Very few values. So I'm not gonna, we only have three, three choices <laughs> for the two channel chips. So let's see what choices we get. Three choices. Pretty much this is the only thing that fits the criteria. So this would be 100 volts, uh, 70 amps, Power dissipation, uh, 187 watts. This is actually a very nice, um, a very nice MOSFET combination. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, and this would be power pack eight times eight. Uh, one thing I'm gonna check is also see what other MOSFETs have this package, so that if this MOSFET goes out of production, then I can have some alternatives. This is definitely an interesting alternative. So we have source one and uh, drain uh, two. So this would connect uh, essentially um, D2 to S1 and S2 will go to ground. D2 to S1. Right. And S2 goes to ground and the gates. Um, right. Okay. So this seems like a nice package as well. Uh, with the gates there, so it will be like a um, connection going directly from S1 to D2. So between these two. And this one will be. Uh, on a little pad that goes through multiple vias to ground or to the current sense resistor and then to ground. Uh, so there is no necessity to put any um, any vias to lead out the gate of this uh, of this MOSFET, uh, which is nice. The only thing is that uh, for the power connection, it would have been better if the power connection was running across this package. Uh, and to have the uh, the D2 coming out of there and directly connected to S1, that would have been much better. Um, but it's still nothing that's not possible to deal with. This this will just need to have a pad that goes to the to the power source, um, and uh, D2 will connect to the 
to the connector that goes to the motor. So if this goes through bias into an internal power layer, uh, then uh, all of the D2s can be led out directly to the motor connector that's going to be placed somewhere there. Um, so it's it's a nice alternative. I will um, let's look at the price. Yeah, the price is pretty manageable as well. If I buy them uh, similar components uh, one by one, then it's going to be around one euro. Anyway, so it's a it's a nice alternative. Um, right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and just uh, add this symbol then. This would be NMOS and uh, can we use the symbol. This can yeah, they're pretty much the same. I'll duplicate this and uh, I'll just change the name. I'm just going to move this set of fields away from the symbol. It's a little bit annoying that all the fields uh, have to be shown on the symbol, even the like the OK field. So the OK field is the is the lifetime of the component, and it still goes into this, even though they're hidden. They're still annoying. Just to make it simple to create the schematic, I'll place them right by each other like that. Um, make this one like so. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, I'll delete the text there. Uh, then we have the pins of the package. So one is gate one. Uh, one, two is source one. Uh, yeah, um, and the drain is three, I guess. Drain one is on the back. Um, I wonder if there is a default package for this. Is there a footprint that can uh, that can be used for this? Package uh, like that? No, 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 no. I double click. I shouldn't have double clicked. This is a custom package. Um, this would be a power pack. Is there any power pack package? Could it be transistor maybe?
it seems that the, the easiest way is probably to just create a custom one. Um, let's go ahead and do that. First, I'm, I'm just going to um, connect the pins here. So one, two, and three is S2. Um, so this would be, let's see. So three is this. Four is the gate of the second one. And then uh, the drain would be D1, D2. Uh, so this would be five and D1 would be five. Let's make this one five. And this one would be six. Okay, that's good. Um, I'll move this one a little bit to the side. So. Yeah, and uh, then I will create the package for this. I'm just going to check where my library is. Uh, so I have a, a custom library with a few uh, components and I'll just um, use that library I think um, let's see manage between projects project specific libraries uh, and I'll append the library custom and the path would be uh, ki j mod so project directory custom uh, preview that should do it. Can I open the custom? Yes. And the new footprint will uh, actually, no. Uh, I want to have a footprint that's called power pack. Uh, this would be power pack eight times eight duo. Okay. So this custom and uh, in the data sheet there should be a detailed footprint for this component apparently not apparently there is no footprint so um, I'll look at um, our pack. Uh, I think it's called Power Pack, which is 1k. Yes. So power pack 8x8, uh, but this one is supposed to be dual. Um, 
It would be good if I could find the dual one. Right, so probably somewhere here. Let's see, power pack. 8 times 8, dual, page 16, awesome. Let's go to page 16. This is exactly what I need. This is precisely what I needed. Awesome. Okay. So, um, this seems to be the right, um, the right footprint. Um, and it's 8 millimeters, 8.1 millimeters. Uh, yes, 8.1. And then doesn't really say what the length of it is, but it seems to be pretty close to what uh, would be reasonable. Uh, so I'll create this footprint and I'll assign it to the component. Um, I'm going to start by placing a pad and changing the type of this pad to SMD. Uh, and it's going to be a rectangular pad, and uh, it will have um, there's no distance from the center. Interesting. Okay, so this is interesting dimensions here. Okay, uh, so these dimensions tell me where the, the pad should start. Uh, so I'll create a pad that is 0 0.82 times 115. Um, okay, this would be 0. Uh, 115, um, 0 point, 0 point would be 115. Um, size X. Okay. So this would be 115 and 0 point 0.82. Uh, looks good. Um, this would be then according to the data sheet. If we flip this around, it's it's going to be yeah. It's it's a standard numbering that starts in the lower left corner uh, and then goes on um, to the right. There is a distance between the pads of two zero. So we can set the. Uh, is this in millimeters? I hope this is in millimeters. Yeah, it must be millimeters because the, the width is 8. Yeah. Uh, so 2 millimeters um, would be the grid size. General settings. Uh, I can say that. Uh, let's see. The grid of. One millimeter would actually be better. So I can move this one. Uh, and now that I change the grid, I have to restart. Could that be correct? Let's see. This one number, this would be D2, 
uh, and the two was number uh, I think I put number uh, I have to check I have to check number six uh, then number six uh, yeah which is which kind of makes sense um, except except I'm gonna give this pin number five just to be a little bit more consistent um, and I'll change the pin numbering uh, in the schematic symbol because uh, then the pins just go around. Uh, so this would be number six, and this would be number five. Uh, great. So, uh, and this pin is going to have a size of four fifty nine along the y and how much and 3.5 we can we can actually make one one pad like this and then just duplicate it into smaller rectangles and just put them on the sides there uh, so um, uh, three three zero five and four fifty nine can measure um, the distance between the pads just to make sure that it's correct uh, this would be number six and then um, I'll copy this let's see 085 which could be pretty much the same size as that one uh, there's 611 there and uh, eight five just a quick calculation uh, so eight two five minus six eleven and five two would be around one uh, yeah so I, I could just use the same size uh, and just duplicate that and place it there um, I'm going to ch change the grid sizes. Um, let's make it 25. Something like that. And this would have the same number as the pin nearby. Right. And duplicate that. Six. And uh, duplicate that. And on the top, I think it's going to be aligned. Uh, and it's going to be half, just half a millimeter uh, and eight there. And the distance is 0 0.8. Good to know. So the distance there must be 0 0.8. I press space and just measure the distance. Distance is one. Let's adjust that. So 
first phase and uh, 0 0.8, good. And then also the distance between each pad and the next is supposed to be 2. Yep. Uh, and then the distance between So um, I'll place this at 405, uh, so that 405 is at the top there. Um, just move this a little bit higher up. I need to make sure that the dimensions are correct. Um, this, this one starts at 323. Uh, so maybe we can move this line of pins. Where is 323? Uh, I can do like this. So I can move it to a position that aligns with the x-axis. And I press space. And I move it down um, as much as is necessary. So that it ends up being a 3.2. Could this be correct? Really? 405. From there to there. Supposed to be 405. Yeah. It seems like it's um, pretty much correct. 362. Could that be correct? Six. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much correct. Um, but uh, the top part is going to be moved down a little. So I'll move this one a little bit down. Um, and the way I'm going to determine how much I have to move it is that I'm going to move it to the edge there, and then press space and move it four units up like this and this one will go here uh, so now uh, this would be four this should be placed at four um, if I just do like this and place it at four like that and this would be 0 0.5 along the line like that. And just move this one up there. Yep. Great. Uh, and then I just duplicate this one and move it exactly for there. Like that. That's fine. That's four. Cool. Um, I build it up and change the number at this point to 6. Does this look like the proper footprint? Definitely looks like it. So 0. Point, um, there is a small overlap. So actually this one should go at 0. 0.44. Um, if I go like this and just... Yeah, so this needs to go down. Um, I'll move it up here and then move it to 0 0.44. Let's see. Yeah, 0 0.45. Uh, and do the same thing to this one. So move space and 0 0.45. Like that. So that it pretty much resembles the diagram here. Uh, between those it should be 611. Let's see how much it is. 635. 611 is a little bit less. Why is it 635? Uh, I guess that it's because I have not... So I have to move the side of it. So 825, 611. Uh, let's move the side to three, uh, 305. 
Um, so I will do like this. Press M, and I'll press space, and then move it to, to the edge there. Press space again, and then move it back to 325 or 305, like that. So, so uh, and the same thing with this one. So this will have to go there just to align it and then 305. Good. So now it should be something closer. 615. Yeah, 611. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's good. Uh, and it should be 8 millimeters across this distance. Yes, exactly 8. Okay, cool. So this is our footprint. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the library and assign this footprint to my MOSFET. Um, this would be custom. And uh, power pack eight. So this symbol is done, and now I can just insert this symbol into the schematic. Uh, and like this. Um, so gate low, gate high. Um, And um, they're going to connect to the, uh, so A, we have A, B, C. So uh, there will be A, B, and C uh, faces uh, for the, the sides of this H bridge, uh, or the side, the full bridge. So we're designing a full bridge here. Uh, so each one will connect to high and low. Uh, this one would be high A. And I'm just thinking of a good way to kind of um, structure this. Let's see. I'm going to have to name the labels appropriately if I do that. Uh, and also I want to see what else we need to have here. So obviously we're going to have resistors that go um, that are in series with the gates to limit the current. Uh, that would be maybe in the schematic it's 10R. Uh, I think we have 22R, which is good enough. Um, so um, 22R at um, 48 volts. Um, I've used 22R before in a different schematic and I got good slopes um, at the desired switching frequency. Um, so I'll use 22R for this schematic as well. Uh, and uh, there will also be resistor uh, to ground. Um, it would be a 10k resistor that will ground this um, this gate so that the gate uh, is always in a known state. So already we are running out of space, so I'll move this move it to the side. And um, let's duplicate this. Uh, actually, I'll finish this first, and then I'll duplicate the whole thing. Personally, I don't like using uh, the TCAD um, subsheets. 
um, because it's um, it can create errors. I like to have all of the components visible. So um, and then this would be duplicated down there and uh, just so I'll place the resistor there and connect this one to ground as well. Just keep it all symmetrical. G H uh, G L A one uh, and G L A one will go here and uh, S L A one will go to the source. Uh, which is going to be here. Okay, and this will go to VMOD. And uh, this will go to the current sensing circuit. like that um, and then I'll just update this so this would be GHB1 and GLB1 so uh, low side of the B uh, pair and um, We'll go here and LB will go here and uh, SLB will go um, will go here And uh, GHC, do the same thing for this. GHC, GLC, and uh, SLC. So. Uh, The current sense resistor will go underneath here. I wonder if it was really 10 ohm. I, I don't think it was 10 ohm. I think it was much lower. But I have some memory of this schematic showing something along the lines of 10 million, right, of course. Um, so 10 milliohms. Let's 
see if I have any resistors left. We'll go there. No. So I'll pick a, a current sense resistor. And um, it's going to be 48 volts, um, although we can go for 60 volts and 10 milliohms, so we can calculate the power uh, of this resistor. So the current through it um, would be, the maximum current through it would be for, uh, let's see, divided by 0 0.1. And I also need to take into account the resistance of the MOSFETs. Um, two channel MOSFET there. Let's see if it says here. 8.6 milliohms. So um, I have to go to the toilet. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so looking at um, picking the current resistor here. Um, so uh, the current resistor will be uh, essentially, uh, let's see. So the current resistor will be essentially uh, connected as a resistive bridge. Uh, if, if both MOSFETs are on, uh, which we can assume, like if, if the motor is connected across the H bridge, then it will be like this one on and this one on, for example. And that powers an inductor, and then uh, the current flows uh, through the MOSFETs, um, and they have a resistance of 8.2 milliohms. Uh, so we can say maybe around 16.4 uh, milliohms, uh, and then we have the 10 milliohms resistor uh, that sits here. Um, and um, I'm going to calculate uh, the power dissipation of this resistor. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to find the power dissipation of this um, of this resistor and the power uh, in the resistor we'll, We're going to use the power rule, which is uh, current times voltage, but the important thing to uh, To note is that the voltage across this resistor is going to be very very small um, if we have uh, let's say um, If we have if we have a motor connected, it's going to have its own uh, DC resistance in the coils. Um, so we can, um, uh, let's see. Uh, so there will be several ohms connected in between the MOSFETs. And then there will be the uh, resistance of the, of the MOSFETs themselves. Um, and let me just check. Uh, something so I will I'll check the I'll check a motor data sheet
So to to determine um, to determine which um, which uh, current sensor resistors uh, I'm going to be using, I have to look at uh, at the resistance of the MOSFET, and uh, also um, add to that the typical resistance of the motor that's going to be uh, connected across here. Uh, and also I have to look at the sensor inputs uh, of the uh, DRV chip just to see the voltage uh, the voltage um, range that's going to be uh, applicable to the to the inputs here so uh, this this inputs uh, we have to choose a resistor that's going to swing those inputs uh, as much as possible from from the one extreme to the other so that we use the full range of the of the inputs when we do the current sensing uh, so i'm going to go to the uh, to the data sheet of the drv chip and uh, i'm going to check what it says about the current sensing inputs quite possible we can search for RI sense. Let's see. Yeah, doesn't really say much. Uh, but it does say the gain. So let's see. Uh, we have a gain selection. Uh, so it could be that we can, I think we can choose between 10 to 20 volts in gain. Uh, let's see, gain. Ten or forty volts. Uh, so, what does this mean in practice? Uh, this means that um, the the output. Uh, let me just check here what the output is. Also, I think the output is between uh, zero and three point three volts. Um, SO1 and SO2. I have to check what the output voltages are. Maybe there is a table that specifies the maximum rating somewhere. Let's see here. So, 10, uh, that's gain for the current shunt amplifier characteristic. Gain option 1, uh, gain 2 volts. Okay, so typical 10 volts to 4 volts. Uh, and uh, output swing, linear range. So uh, the output swing is between 0 and 5.7 volts, uh, or 0 0.3, and um, let's see. So we're gonna we're gonna have to take care to uh, protect the microcontroller inputs uh, from this high voltage, uh, and um, if we have uh, a drive that is capable of 20 amps uh, or in this case we can we we have transistors that are capable of 70 amps so we can probably up the uh, working range to maybe 40 amps uh, then we can uh, using this gain we can calculate the voltage on the input of the amplifier um, 
So it would be if uh, if 40 amps is 5 volts, then uh, the voltage that corresponds to to one amp on the output is 0. Uh, is 125 millivolts. Uh, and if we divide that by 10, then we get about 12 millivolts. Uh, so 12 millivolts would correspond to 40 amps. And um, then we can calculate the resistance of the current resistor. Uh, if we assume that the motor has a resistance of maybe 0 0.5 um, ohms in the windings, uh, and our transistors have a rather negligible resistance of 8 milliohms, uh, then we get sort of like a resistor divider uh, made from the transistors and the motor. And, and then on, at the bottom, we have this current sensing resistor. So if the voltage on this resistor is going to be 12 millivolts, uh, how much uh, is the resistance? So 12 millivolts corresponds to, um, let's assume 0 0.6 ohms for the transistors and the motor. Um, then we can do like this. Uh, so there is 48 volts coming in um, and uh, it's divided between the uh, 0 0.6 ohms uh, and an unknown resistor. So the value I get is 0 0.1 uh, milliohm. Am I calculating this wrong? Now it, se it seems uh, it seems that um, the resistance that I get is uh, sixteen milliohms. Uh, so I want to check if if there is any. Let's see, do we have any resistors here? Uh, I'm gonna go here and um, I'll check current sense resistors. I'm going to go to current sense resistors and uh, I will choose the resistor that's zero point, um, let's see, 
0 0.1 milliohms. It's almost like that, uh, but I don't think we need, I think we, we can go with 1 milliohm. So if I choose 1 milliohm resistor, uh, then, um, oh look at this, this is nice. So, um, let's see. Well, this is even better. Uh, this little copper thingy. So, um, So this is this is a five watt resistor, and uh, the voltage across this resistor is gonna be um, in the order of uh, a few millivolts. So if we have forty eight volts and uh, we have zero point six ohms on at the top and uh, one milliohm at the bottom, then uh, we would get let's see. And we should get around eight millivolts. And uh, eight millivolts multiplied by gain of ten. Um, let's see. So So that would be, let's see. So eight eight milliohms, um, eight millivolts. Sorry, uh, let's see. So if if we have uh, if if we have a resistor that is um, one milliohm, if we have a resistor that's one milliohm, and we have a circuitry that has a resistance of zero point six ohms, uh, including the transistors, then uh, we would get at forty eight volts. Uh, we would get zero point, get about 80 millivolts across this resistor. Um, and uh, that would be then multiplied by 10. Uh, so we should get around zero point, uh, zero point 0.8 volts on the output, which is a little bit like a little bit on the lower side of the range. Um, if I have a more powerful motor though, um, I may get a lower resistance uh, in the motor, uh, so it could potentially mean that um, I can have a much uh, higher voltage on the input. So um, I think that ideally something in the order of 0 0.5 volts should be um, optimal. So what I want to do is pick a resistor that that has a um, that has a generic uh, packaging where uh, th that would allow me to to just swap out the resistor for something for a different one if if I need to adjust the uh, the current sensing resistance. Um, 
so I think that for now, uh, for now I will um, I will pick a one milliohm resistor, and uh, later I can um, um, do some testing and uh, do some more calculations and see if I can find what would be the best um, alternative for this current sensing resistor. Um, so at the maximum, um, something something to consider also. Uh, something to consider uh, with this DRV chip is that when the current um, when when the current sensing uh, resistor gets a voltage that's over a certain range. Uh, for example, uh, 0.5 volts if we are using 10, 10x gain. Uh, when it comes over that range, then the the chip will actually power down the bridge because it will think that the bridge is in overcurrent. Um, so we don't have to really worry about any voltages higher than 0.5 volts or uh, higher than 0. Point, uh, let's see, if we use 40 uh, gain then we will have uh, anything that's over 125 millivolts uh, we can be completely sure that uh, if the resistor can handle the power uh, that's going to be dissipated when the voltage across it is um, is 0 0.5 volts and the current is uh, the maximum current uh, of the of the bridge then uh, everything is going to be fine because the chip is going to automatically limit uh, the, the current through the resistor to that value. Uh, so let's see if, if we have a uh, if we have a resistor uh, like this, a four baht uh, copper resistance. Uh, then um, this one is actually ten baht. Um, but let, let's look at a one milliohm resistor. Uh, so one milliohm resistor at uh, 0.5 volts times uh, the current would be 40 amps. Uh, we would need to have around 20 watts. If we use a 40 uh, unit gain, then we only need to worry about, um, let's see, so that would be 125 millivolts times 40. Then it would be around 5 watts. So if we use this resistor with a 40 um, with a 40 unit gain, then this should be fine. Uh, but I think ideally I would probably use something like this or something that is a little bit cheaper, like um, this one is 12,000 in stock. So this is, this is 1 million, 1%, um, but cannot handle that much current. But this one, uh, 1.83, it's in stock, it's 8 watt, uh, and it looks like this would be the perfect uh, current sensing solution for this uh, bridge. Uh, so um, the last thing I'll do is just uh, sort this by price and just see if I can find something that uh, that is better in terms of both price and precision uh, and maximum dissipated power. Uh, so this would be uh, 1 milliohm 6 watts. Uh, this would be 1210. I like 1210 packaging, but this is 5% precision. So we want to have something that is 1% precision. Uh, this one is 3 watts. Um, so a little bit smaller. 25, 12, 5%, 3 watts, 1%, 1210. Uh, and this one doesn't have any rating but I think 1210 is not a very uh, high power um, package so let's look at this one non-stock okay uh, chip resistor so um, one percent uh, one watt and let's go to something that is um, above five watt
So most of the cheap ones, they're rather low power. Um, I want to pick something that is a little bit higher in power, uh, in maximum power rating. Uh, so I'll pick something that is probably going to be the, the resistor that I looked at first, which is this one. Uh, so this is uh, this is eight watt resistor, uh, and the next one is um, the next one would be I suppose the seven watt SMD seven watt resistor. And what is the packaging of this resistor? Uh, right. Seventy one forty six. It's a rather large part. I think I will go with the um, uh, with the resistor that I found down here. That was eight watts and uh, rather good precision. Uh, so I'll pick this one and I'll add it to my library. And for now, this is the resistor I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'll set this just one million one percent, and uh, the wattage is something we can just give as a comment. Uh, so eight, eight watt. Yeah. Let's see. One million. Yeah. And uh, I want to remove the visibility uh, of the field eight watt. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, oh, did it just close the window? That was quite annoying. Uh, properties library. Uh, go to the field editor and I'll modify this comment to be invisible. This should do it. Uh, edit update film values and then it's invisible. Uh, so the, I will have uh, current sensing on these two phases uh, and um, According to the data sheet, uh, let's see what it says about current sensing circuit. Uh, so there is a resistor and there is a, a thousand picfarad capacitor. 
So basically, uh, they just connect directly to the to the sensing pins. And this is uh, and this is voltage sensing. So this is how they implement voltage sensing. Okay, so 1,000 picofarads uh, would be one nanofarad, and that would have to be rated at probably something like 100 volts. So one nanofarad. I'll have to find one nanofarad capacitor for let's see, that's, um, 63 volts. I'll just search for the capacitance and I'll, then I can refine the search. Um, capacitors. Then I can uh, choose the SMD and uh, the capacitance. Uh, let's see. Yes, 1000 picofarads, something over 63 volts, um, and just apply the process. I have 3000 possible alternatives. And uh, I want to use for two components. So did it apply the filters? No. Still loading. No. Um, so something like, let's see this price. Uh, these are quite expensive, so I'm not going to use them. Uh, I'm going to go with the basic capacitors. And uh, they may need to be a little bit bigger. And 402 because of the voltages. This is this is the the typical uh, most widely used capacitors. So 100 volts, thousand picofarads, good price. This is the one I'm going to be using. This is a 603. Just make it one nanofarad, and uh, the number, and then make sure to be updated, and then graphic. There we go, and uh, six oh three is the package, so I can just this component yeah. I named it one nanofarad capacitor 603 there we go yeah I just need to Let's 
not this here um, and I'll just connect um, so the negative is going to go to ground uh, let's see is that trivial? is that how they're connected? SM is P so S no, SN is actually connected to the top and SP is connected to the bottom. Okay. So this will move. And uh, copy this and then just connect the S N. Uh, SM two one. And uh, let's see, S and let's see if I can just fire this together. So um, I will just delete the label. It's much better to just do it like this, if possible. Then the ground is connected to the so it's going to take the ground connection and place it there. And this one is connected directly to the ground. Like that. So this is this is starting to get a little better, uh, but it's far from complete and uh, there's a lot more to do. Uh, a lot more double checking to do and uh, uh, a bit of calculations for um, to make sure that everything is going to be working properly. Um, and I also may be looking into uh, using um, an isolated voltage sensing circuit that doesn't need to connect directly to the phases of the motor. Um, I'll see what I do. Let's see, so this video is now two hours long. A little bit over two hours long. Um, and I think that I'm gonna take a little break and come back to this a bit later. Um, and then continue to to lay out the um, connections here. So S L C one. Let's just connect S L C one there. That's good. Okay. GHC one sec. GHC one connects there. So this uh, pretty much represents the power drive stage. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope you didn't get bored looking at how I'm laying out the schematics. And uh, until next time.